What's up, everybody? Back with another episode of this series, Is Paul a False Apostle? And if you've watched any of them so far, then you know that I'm not teaching that Paul is a false apostle, but that he's not. Many people are out, out here believe that uh, Paul is a false apostle and think that he speaks against the law of God. Many people out here believe that Paul is a true apostle. And I just hear a helicopter flying over him. I'm just looking for it. Um, many people believe that Paul is a true apostle. And that he taught against the law of God. And I'm showing in this series that Paul didn't teach against the law of God. And some of his writings, for example, here in Philippians, we're going through Philippians today. Some of his writings um, don't really have any have any uh, scriptures that that are hard to understand in that way about the law. And Philippians is is one of those. So we're not going to um so as far, as far as Paul being a false apostle, there's not too much to address here in Philippians. But I'm going through all of Paul's writings regardless and uh the last day when we go through um uh Philemon, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, I'm going to go through some of the disputed uh, scriptures and acts as well. I'm going to go through Philemon, it's just in one chapter, and then uh, some of the stuff in Acts. So here we are in Philippians, and uh, just an, another edifying writing from the Apostle Paul. And so the letter to the Philippians was written written to the church, the believers in Philippi. And Philippi is a, a major Greek city northwest of the nearby island, Thessalus. And so if we go to Philippi on the map, it's right here. Philippi uh, let me zoom it out a little bit more near Bulgaria What we know here is uh, modern-day Turkey, Greece, Israel, Lebanon, Syria, and Philippi. One more time, let me pull it up. Right there. The zoom is being difficult right now. But just to show you where Philippi was. So uh, here we go with Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons. So real quick about the overseers and deacons, and we're not going into a deep study about this, and I actually need to look into it a little bit more myself. But we're just going to go to the Greek words real quick today. And the word for overseer is the Greek word episkopos, 1985. And definition is a superintendent, an overseer. Uh, supervisor, ruler, with reference to the supervising function ex exercised by an elder or presbyter of a church or congregation. And uh, 
Strong says bishop or overseer, a superintendent, Christian officer in charge of the church. So maybe one other day, one, one day uh, I'll go through the difference between o do a study on overseers, deacons, and bishops, and all, all the different things that are mentioned in Scripture. But for right now, I'm just going to do a quick overview real real quick. And then, so it said the overseer and deacon. The deacon is the Greek word, 1949, diakonos, which is a definition of servant or minister. Uh, one who performs any service, an administrator. Deacon, minister, servant, to run errands, a waiter, Christian teacher, a pastor, someone who, uh, and some of these other, uh, a deacon, one by virtue of office, assigned, assigned him by the church, cares for the poor, and has charge, charge of and distributes money collected for their use. And I'll just stop it there. Now, uh, like I said, maybe one day I'll do a deeper study on all these titles that's mentioned that are mentioned. Paul and Timothy. So this come, this letter was uh, from Paul and Timothy. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all, in view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who, be, who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all, because I have you in my heart, since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, you are partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness, how I long for you all in the affection of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, when he uh, returns, when he, when he comes on the clouds. Uh, the day of the Lord, actually, it's a reference to when he comes on the clouds, when he brings destruction. But the day of the Lord is also the seventh day would be the millennial reign. And so it can be referencing the thousand year reign or um, when he comes in the tribulation time. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been fulfilled or having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Christ Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and to everyone else, and that most of the brethren trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. Because they saw that what he was going through and and saw that he was okay. He was still praising God. Some, to be sure, are preaching Christ even from envy and strife. And some also from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, those who, who do it from goodwill. Knowing that I am appointed... For the defense of the gospel, the former, those who preach out of envy and strife, the former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, 
rather than from pure motives, thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice. Hallelujah. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through, through your prayers and the provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope, that I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now, as always, be exalted in my body, whether in, by life or death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And here comes a, a scripture, I believe, that is misunderstood by many. Um, and I'll tell you what I believe it's saying here in a second. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Because of the things that he's facing in this life, because of his trials and tribulations, Paul went through the most for the gospel of Christ. For me to live is Christ, is Christ, and to die is gain. To live is for for Him, for the edification, uh, for the edification of the kingdom, for the edific edification of the body, for the kingdom of God, for Christ. And to die is gain for Himself because of all the trials and tribulations that He was going through. But if I am to live on in the flesh. This will mean fruitful labor for me in the kingdom. And I do not know which to choose, which he would rather. But I am hard pressed from both directions. Having a desire to, to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is necessary for your sake. So, I believe this is a misinterpreted scripture by many to depart and be with Christ. And a lot of people take this to mean that when you die, you're right with Christ. You're right. You're in heaven. But I don't believe that's the case for many reasons. And uh, for instance, one, one example would be the prayers of the saints at the fifth seal. The, the soul, their souls are crying out to God saying how long when are when are you going to um when are you going to take vengeance on us when are we going to be resurrected I mean it do, it doesn't say that it says when are when are you, when are you going to uh, avenge our our blood but um these we see in Psalm 18 that they're crying out from Sheol the souls are crying out from Sheol. Just like in Jonah. He was crying out from Sheol. And. Um, which is. Where our souls go when we die. Our spirit goes to heaven. Our souls go to Sheol. And our body goes in the ground. Or, where, or wherever. Whatever happens to our body. So. I, I don't think this is saying. When he says that having a desire to to depart to part and to depart and be with Christ means, I don't believe this is saying when we die we we go we go straight to heaven. But to be with Christ in death, but I am hard pressed from both directions, having the des desire to depart and be with Christ in death, the way Christ died. For that is very much better than his current situation of suffering. And and also, you know what? I just don't believe it's saying uh, that we go straight to heaven. Uh, I don't believe that's what he's saying here. I have the desire to depart and to be with Christ. To be with Christ in death and also to be with Christ in heaven, although that doesn't happen immediately. And we know Christ didn't, um, uh, of course, of course, we know he didn't stay in death. But, uh, 
but we are to carry our cross and be willing to die for his sake, just as he, he died for our sake. I'm hard pressed from both directions, having a desire to, to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. Yet to remain on the, in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that your proud confidence in me may abound in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear, hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. In no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but a sign of salvation for you. That too, that too from God, um, and actually, just to say one more thing, um, in the example of, the, of Lazarus and the rich man, the parable that Jesus spoke, um, it mentioned Abraham's bosom as a uh, paradise, but I don't believe this is, uh, I don't believe that was heaven. Um, I believe that was Sheol, it's separated into two parts and actually a third part for the, for the angels, the bottomless pit, but, uh, the, the book of Enoch mentions three. And we see two there in uh, what Jesus spoke. And I don't believe Abraham's bosom is actually heaven. For example, when Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise uh, to the thief on the cross. He didn't go to that's he went after he died, he didn't go to heaven. He didn't go straight to heaven. If you remember, he uh after his resurrection he said, I haven't haven't yet ascended to the to the Father. He uh first went to Sheol. He went to Hades, which many people believe uh it's just like a place of burning, but there's the it's separated into two parts, and and um, that's where he went and preached to the souls in prison in Hades and uh, Sheol. And then, after he was resurrected from Sheol back into his body, that's when he remember he told Mary Magdalene, uh, "Stop clinging to me, stop touching me. I haven't yet ascended to the Father." So when he told the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise, I don't believe that was speaking about heaven. Um, I, I could be wrong, though. I could, I could be wrong. I don't, but I don't believe that was speaking about heaven unless his spirit, just his spirit, because our, see, there's a difference between our soul and our spirit and our body, and I have to do a deeper study on this to understand it better. But one example I thought was a good example that I saw uh, someone post online recently. Uh, the example was a car and the driver. The, the car is our body. The driver is our soul. And our spirit is what's giving the driver directions, what's giving our soul directions. And we can be directed by our own spirit, by the spirit of God, or by unclean spirits, demons other spirits and um, from my understanding our the Bible says our spirit goes back to God who sent it our souls go to Sheol and our bodies go on the ground or however uh, or whatever happens to our bodies So maybe in spirit, I, I don't know, I gotta, 
I gotta look into it some more. I gotta think about it some more, look into it some more uh, regarding that. But uh, when he said, today you will be with me in paradise, I don't think he necessarily meant heaven unless he was just talking about his spirit, but not the soul. So I, like I said, I need to think about it some more and speak about it some more. And, uh, and I could be wrong about, maybe it's the spirit this, that, that Paul is speaking about here, depart and be with Christ, it's spirit. It comes down to a, a deeper study on the understanding of the spirit and soul and all that, which I have to study into some more. So, so I'm not... In regards to this scripture, I'm not saying anything for sure. Uh, I don't want to, just to just to put that out there. I don't want to mislead anybody. I'm not saying anything for sure, but this is my understanding on it. Uh, what I what I've spoken so far, and uh, that our souls don't go directly to heaven, but our spirit. Uh, the Bible says our spirit goes back to God who sent it. So uh, what's the difference between soul and spirit? That's what it comes down to, really, and understanding that. So uh, I have some more studying to do regard in regards to that. Um, if anybody has any uh, thoughts on all that, let me know. You can comment on the video. You can send me a message. You can uh, email me. Larry Newport, authentic with a K at the N instead of a C at gmail.com. But uh, let's get back into Philippians. Philippians is only four chapters, and so we should be able to run through this pretty quick. Uh, back in verse 27 of chapter 1. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come... And see you or remain absent. I will hear of you. That you're standing firm in one spirit. With one mind. Striving together for the faith of the gospel. In no way alarmed by your opponents. Which is a sign of destruction for them. But salvation for you. That too from God. That too from God. For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake. Not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Experiencing the same conflict which you saw on me and now and now here to be in me. Before we get into Philippians 2, I just want to uh, just just touch on this one more time. Um, I believe it comes down to this, uh, the separation of soul and spirit and the understanding of the difference of the two. Um, like I said, the... The, the souls, the soul is more our, from my understanding, my current understanding, more our mind and our emotions and our thoughts and our will. And that's, that part of us is going to be in Sheol. It's not going straight to heaven. And that part of us is going to be crying out to God um, and praying to him from Sheol. Now, what our what our spirit is exactly, I don't have a complete understanding on exactly what our spirit is. Um, so in regards to that scripture, depart and be with Christ. Maybe he was speaking about his spirit departing and being with Christ, although his soul is going to be in Sheol. Um but I don't believe our our whole being, our, our soul, our, uh, is, is, is going to be in heaven right after we die. But in Sheol, awaiting to be, awaiting our uh, new bodies, awaiting our new glorified bodies, which, which our soul is going to go into and uh, be resurrected. Now, what exactly our spirit is, I got to do some more studying on that. So I just want to I just wanted to touch on that one more time and try to give try to clear that up a little bit, give a little bit better understanding of 
my understanding on on what this is uh on on this topic because I I felt like it was uh with everything I said a few minutes ago it might have been kind of confusing uh so that's my current understanding uh I'm still learning uh, I'm not perfect uh I don't know everything and this is something that I'm going to study into some more uh, regarding our, our spirit and our soul and that whole thing. So let me just uh, continue. Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, is there, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. We need to be humble and regard one another as more important than us. Do not merely look, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in the appearance of man, appearance as a man, in the appearance of as a man, but in the form of God. And no, I don't believe in the Trinity as a lot of people believe it. Um, I don't believe this was the Father in human form. I believe it was the Son in human form. The Father was still in heaven. The Son was in human form on the earth. And we see all three when Jesus was baptized, the Father speaking from heaven, the Holy Spirit descending as a dove, and the Son being baptized. But he, he laid down his glory to be born as a human and appear in the form of a man. The Son of God, God the Son while the Father was still in heaven. It's not the Father appearing as uh, in human form as, as, as a son, as the Son. It's the, the Son of God who was in heaven with the Father, appearing as uh, being born as a human and coming as a man. And we're going to pull up the scripture here in a minute that mentions God... And, you know, I could always be wrong on my understanding of this as well. Uh, but God being mentioned is the every knee shall bow to God. And then to in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. But then, but they're both God. Both the Father and the Son are both God. Not the same being, though. The Father's more the head of the household. The Son was brought forth from the Father. Uh, in other words, uh, a part, you know, I don't want to speak on something I don't want to understand. I, I want, I was about to say created by the father, brought forth by the father, but uh, I just want to be careful with what I, what I say. Having this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not re regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Did not re regard equality of the equality with the Father a thing to be grasped. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God, the Father, 
highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. Every knee, everyone, dead or alive, will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now let's go to the scripture this is quoted from here in Isaiah 45. And I'm going to start in verse 22. Turn to me and be saved, all, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness. And will not turn back. That every knee will bow. Every tongue will swear allegiance. They will say to me. They will say of me. Only in Yahuwah are righteousness and strength. Men will come to him, and all who are angry at him will be put to shame. So I am God, and there is no other. And uh, I believe the Father and the Son are one, not as in the same being, or different parts of the same being. But one as in unity. They're all. Because Jesus said. Let us. And in regards to how him and the father are one. He said. May. Speaking about us. Speaking about the believers. His disciples said. May they be one. As you. As me. And you are one. May they be one with us as as uh with one another and with us with uh, with them as as the Son and the Father are one. So we're not God, we're not gonna be God, but but we'll join with him in unity and in, in likeness. And this is my understanding on it. I don't. I don't believe the Trinity as in one God, but three parts of the same God. I believe there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are one as in unity. There's no other God except the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, and the Holy Spirit is a. Uh, more the spirit of God. But I don't believe uh, the father and the son are one as in the same being. But we see this scripture here in Isaiah 45 says Jesus is God. To the glory of God the father. <laughs> you know. So. So to go back here. uh to Philippians 2. For this reason also God exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. At the name of Yeshua every knee will bow. And this is what was said about God. So God the Father exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. Which is his name, uh, Yahuwah, Yeshua. Uh, the son in the Old Testament is known as as, Yah, as Yahuwah, the same name as the Father. They both have the same name, but they're not the same being. And we see the difference here. Uh, for this reason, God also highly exalted him. The Father highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And we know uh, that's God. At the name of God, every knee will bow. So in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And that's what's said about God. In Isaiah 45. 
to the glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Father. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do, <clears throat> do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God, above reproach, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory, because I did not run in vain, nor toil in vain. But, if I, but, if, but even if I am being poured out as a drink offering of, upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with you all. You too, I urge you, rejoice in the same way and share your joy with me. But I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, so that I may also be encouraged when I learn of your condition. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned of your welfare, for your welfare. For they all seek after their own interests, not those of Christ Jesus. But you know of this proven worth, of his proven worth, that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately, Timothy, as soon as I see how things will go with me. And I trust, that the, I trust in the Lord that I myself will also be coming shortly. But I thought it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my need, because he was longing for you all and was distressed because of you, or because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick to the point of death, but God had mercy on him, and not to him only, but also to me, so that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I have sent, sent him all the more eagerly, so that when you see him again, you may rejoice and I be, may be less concerned about you. Receive him then in the Lord with all joy, and hold men like him in high regard, because he came close to death for the work of Christ risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. Philippians 3 Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the dogs. So this is, uh, I guess, his second writing to them. Or at least his second writing to them. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Unless he's referring to uh, earlier in, a, in his writing. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. Meaning the Jews who aren't circumcised in heart. For we are the true circumcision. Who worship in the spirit of God. And glory in Christ Jesus, and put no confidence in the flesh and our own abilities to uh, earn our salvation. Although, although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I'm more. So he's saying, if 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 anyone would would be in a position to would be tempted to put confidence in our in our flesh, our own abilities to be right with God, uh, because of his uh, his position and his uh, background. He said, I, "I would more, but even I in this, even I even I in this position, and uh, even I who I am, I don't put any confidence in the flesh in my own abilities to be right with God by by my own abilities." It's only through faith, and this is what he's saying. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has the mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, 
As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to the righteousness which is found in the law, blameless. And we know Paul wasn't perfect, but uh, he followed the commandments. He kept the commandments. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as, as lost for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in the view of the surpassing knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain to the res resurrection of the dead. Meaning, dying to our old self and not considering anything we, ha we own or anything in this life as anything, but our focus completely on the kingdom and what's next. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that which is and so, he's saying, not that I've already obtained it, meaning eternal life and salvation, or I've already become perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which was, for which I also was laid hold of by Christ Jesus, in eternal life. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. So, this is a, this verse speaks against uh, eternal security. He's saying, I, I haven't seen myself as, uh, I don't look at myself as uh, receiving that yet, receiving eternal life and being set for life, being completely good. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having, because we have to endure to the end. We have to keep the faith until the end. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do Forget, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward of what lies ahead. We need to forget the, our past life and the things of this life. And stay focused on Him and His kingdom. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. Brethren, join in, my, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk, of whom I often told you, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, who don't walk in a correct way, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite or their belly, who focus on food all the time and uh, overeat, whose, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. And we can't do that. We got to leave our... All that stuff behind, we got to focus on the kingdom and on, on him and forget the things of this life. And whose glory is in their shame and who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, which also we eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory. By the exertion of the power that he that he has even to subject all things to himself. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. Therefore, my beloved, therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. I urge you. Iodia, and I urge Syntyche to live in harmony in the Lord. 
indeed true companion. I ask you to help these women who have shared in my struggle because of the cause of the gospel, together with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your spirit be let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by supplication, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your request be known to God, made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. Hallelujah. Will regard will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. We need to think on the things above. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace be with you all. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have re revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, of both having abundance abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All things, we endure through all things, through him who strengthens us. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the manner of giving and receiving but you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. But I received everything in full and have and have in abundance I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. Now our God and Father or now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who were, who were with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Hallelujah. And interesting that it ends with that, be with your spirit. So, uh, again, I gotta, I'm going to do a deeper study on uh, the spirit and soul. And if anybody, uh, anybody that may have a better understanding than me on this, uh, let me know. Uh, we're all here to edify one another. And I'm not bigger, I don't consider myself bigger or more knowledgeable or anything than anybody else. I believe God speaks through me and works through me and gives me understanding on a lot of these scriptures. But I, like I said, I don't have a complete understanding on everything. And I do need to understand a little bit better the spirit and soul. And uh, and I also gave my understanding on the Godhead and the study as well. But there wasn't too much here in Philippians that uh, that we have to... Uh, Uh, that's that's too that's really hard to understand in regards to the law, and Paul speaking about the law, and that's really the point of uh, this series about is Paul a false apostle, which he's not, and uh, he's just misunderstood, 
And uh, we're going to go through all the writings of Paul. Regardless, uh, even the ones like this, which don't really uh, address, which, which don't really uh, aren't really confusing about the law and stuff like that. And Lord willing, I'm getting ready to do uh, a Sabbath study. And I may put that out before this, Lord willing. Uh, we'll see what he leads me to do, what he puts together for me. But um, I just see in a lot of these Facebook groups, I see a lot of people online who uh, don't believe we have to keep the Sabbath. And uh, this is one of the main things uh, that uh, the body of Christ has an issue with. That um, a lot of people believe we don't have to keep the Sabbath. That the that that the Bible says the Sabbath is done away with, and we don't have to worry about it. But that's not true. The Sabbath is very important, and Shabbat Shalom to anybody out there keeping it today. Um, Shabbat Shalom just means uh, Shabbat is Sabbath. Shalom is peace. It's a greeting. So happy Sabbath or peace. Sabbath peace, in other words. Um, it's just a common greeting on, on the Sabbath, Shabbat Shalom. But uh, Lord willing, I'll do that. Uh, that's the end of Philippians. And next next up is, uh, I believe it's Colossians. Yep, next up is Colossians. And if I remember right, let me double check. I believe there's four chapters in Colossians. So we should be able to roll through that, that one uh Pretty quick as well compared to some of the other other uh, studies. Let's see, yep, four chapters in Colossians, and Lord willing, we'll do that tomorrow. And that's the end of Philippians, brothers and sisters. Let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end. No matter what we have to go through in this life, let's. Uh, do his will in everything. Let's walk in all his ways. And endure to the end. And he's going to give us the kingdom. Um, we see that he's going to. Deliver us. And we see the rapture and the resurrection. And uh, the cause. In the prayers of the saints. In the fifth seal. And also in. Uh, Revelation chapter 8. The prayers of the saints on the altar. And this is uh, from the dead and the living. So, the dead being those who are, who, whose souls are still in Sheol. And the living, those who are still alive. And that represents the resurrection and the rapture. The prayers of the saints. And no matter what we have to go through in the last days, we have to endure to the end. And we call upon him and he delivers. Hallelujah. Let's keep the faith, let's walk in all his ways, and let's preach the gospel. Let's tell people about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us. Let's show his love in everything and shine his light in everything we do. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. Let's... Uh, God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus was born as a human, just like us. Uh, faced the same trials and tribulations and temptations that we face. But lived a perfect life. And the, although he didn't deserve any punishment. He didn't deserve that death. The punishment for sin is death. And ultimately, the second death in the lake of fire, death of body and soul, is a punishment for sin If for anyone who doesn't come to faith and um, destroy forever. And uh, he took on our punishment for sin. And on the cross, he died that death for us so that through faith in him, we receive his perfection. He, we receive his perfection. He received our punishment for sin, our death. And it's on, he's the only way to get forgiveness of sins. 
He's the only way that the only one that paid the debt for our sins, made took on the punishment for our sins. The only way to be made right with God, to be cleansed, is through him and what he did on the cross, his sacrifice, it's the free gift of God. You just gotta accept it. You just gotta turn to him and ask him to forgive your sins. Genuinely from your heart. And you gotta mean it. You gotta turn to him to you gotta be willing to follow him. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins, you call out to him. Call on him to save you, to forgive you. And he will. And he'll he'll save you, he'll forgive you, he'll change you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, which will change you from the inside out. You won't be the same and you won't want to be the same. The Bible says we can't even imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It's uh, eternal life, and we can't even imagine what he has prepared for us. It's uh, incredible. See, most people are going to die this first physical death, and then they're going to stand before God in judgment, and then be thrown into the lake of fire for the second death. But God is so gracious that for us living in this final generation, we have the opportunity to not even die once. Many people alive today aren't even going to die, are going to be taken, are going to be transformed into a new glorified immortal body and then caught up into his kingdom for eternal life without even dying. God is gracious. God is merciful. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. But if you don't, you're going to be uh, judged and thrown into the lake of fire. And I don't wish that on anybody. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. It's to make that decision to turn to God for salvation. To truly give your life to Him. Turn to Him for forgiveness. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is the end of Philippians. End of another day of uh, is Paul, a false apostle. Next up is Colossians. Shabbat Shalom to everyone celebrating the Sabbath today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.